we got to stand up this morning. And right now, I was going to say people under 25, that might not be accurate. So if you feel that you are a youth, <laughs> please stand up. I see David Millen's class standing up. So, we're going to repeat three sentences, okay? We're going to repeat them after me. I am a youth. I am a youth. Today, I embraced it. Today, I embraced it. And I will succeed. And I will succeed. Please be seated. Okay, so. Today, we got to listen to some amazing speakers, see some amazing presentations. And I'm humbled to be on the stage because I was saying to Yusuf in the bathroom that I'm nervous because <laughs> What I do is not amazing. Like, uh, you know, I don't go to Sudan and I don't come up with green waste management. Uh, there's no waste, but uh, I don't come up with green <laughs> waste management proposals. Like, all I know how to do is like kind of think. And I, everyone here can do that. We just, you know, the psychology behind it. I took psychology, Carlton. Uh, it wasn't for me because uh, I'm not. Uh, I couldn't do it. Um, but that's all that I know really how to do. Is I, I just know how to think. So um, when I was asked to speak here today. Um, I'm going to tell you a story, and it's not an egotistical story, but it might come across that way. Um, but what I want you to do is, is think about your own lives and your own initiatives uh, while you're doing, uh, while you're listening to, to my story. So, uh, my name is Dave Hale, and I am 22 years old. But that's actually a lie. Um, I'm 21, but this is what we do, right? It's psychology. Like, I'm 21 in like a half, but I'm 22 because I wanted to impress you. Uh, I also wore my Blackberry on stage because, you know, I wanted to come across more professional. So, I'm just going to take this off right now, and uh, please hang on to this for me for the rest of the presentation. Okay, so, my name's Dave Hale, and I'm 21 years old. When I was 17, I started my first business. Uh, I, I was a clothing designer. Uh, what does that mean? I, I put graphics on t-shirts. Who else has ever done that? Anyone else? Congratulations, you're all entrepreneurs. <laughs> so, I put graphics on t-shirts, and um, I sold t-shirts for two months and then had my business bought because it was doing really well. After that, when I was 18, I got the entrepreneurial bug once again. Uh, this time, I came across a 3,200 square foot paintball arena online from North Dakota. I bought it. I was now out of money. And I was like, how am I going to possibly uh, make money from this? It was a big, long story. I'm sure even some of you have played in my arena at various local auto events or Toronto or across North America. Um, two years later, uh, that business was the largest mobile paintball entertainment company in North America. Um, and I was really successful and I was really young and I wasn't really thinking about how I had gotten to that point. Like I never, I never said to myself, this is the criteria that has made me successful. Then I wanted to get a little bit more professional because I was tired of being a carny, pretty much. Um, so I wanted to be a little bit more successful and I was, I was working as a brand strategist at the time um, at a, a local entertainment institution. I was doing really well at it. So I was like, I'm going to go out on my own and I'm going to start uh, my own creative advertising and marketing agency. And when I did that, I was like, well, I've been successful before. Uh, I've been really successful before. So obviously, you know, I, I, must, I must have what it takes to be a great entrepreneur. So I went out and I failed. And I failed really hard. And, I, and this is what uh, you know, some other speakers have been talking about. Until you, you hit the deep, dark pit of failure, you, you really don't know what it feels like. Um, so I failed. And from there, oh, I probably should do this before. So I'm a youth. Anyway, so, uh, and I failed. And as youth, you know what happens when we fail? Um, what happens when we fail? Um, you feel defeated. What happens when we fail? You don't know? Does anyone do this? Anyone make excuses? I made tons of excuses. You know what I said? I said, I still have a great idea. Uh, you know, I'm just not calling enough people. I'm not working with enough people. Uh, you know, everyone, why, isn't, why aren't these businesses finding me? are so good. <laughs> People weren't finding me. And why was that? So I made excuses, and I made excuses, and I made excuses. And then one day, 
I was sitting down, really defeated. I was like broke at this point, and I had had some money before. So to go from that to being broke was crazy. And I sat down to myself and I said, what are the disadvantages that I'm facing right now? What are the disadvantages of being a youth? And this is what I came up with. Despite my previous success, I was still inexperienced, definitely overconfident. I was underfunded, I had a limited network, and I considered myself lacking flexibility. Why? Um, at the time, I had just finished up at Carleton. I'd switched over to Algonquin College. I was taking the two-year business marketing program, which um, anyone who's ever gone from a university setting to a college setting will understand that in university, if you don't want to go to class, you don't have to. Uh, if you want to just read the lecture notes in many cases, that's a fine, unless you have labs and stuff like that. College, I was relying on a network of people, and uh, those people were influencing how I had to work my day. So I wasn't flexible anymore. And so I, I said, these are my disadvantages. And from there, I started thinking, well, if these are my disadvantages, what are my advantages? Because this is what I need to, to overcome this problem that I'm facing. So I listed them. And the ironic thing is maybe the, some of them were a little bit different, and maybe some of them uh, were worded differently. But uh, I listed them on a separate sheet of paper two days later. This is what I came up with. I looked at the other two things that I'd done in my life. I looked at where I'd worked. I'd looked at school, my relationships, friendships. And, and this is what I came up with. Uh, my advantage, I was inexperienced. What does inexperience get you? Well, that meant that for what I was doing, I could charge less because people weren't expecting as much from me. It, it didn't mean that I couldn't produce quality work. It just mean that I didn't have a huge portfolio and a huge resume to back what I was doing. I was still overconfident and you know, I think that confidence is something that's a very interesting subject because when I stood up here, at first I was confident, and, but I was 22 and I had my phone and I was cool, right? So, <laughs> overconfidence, you can be confident and overconfident even, but use it to your advantage. I was still underfunded, that's great, it meant that I was desperate and people fed off that. They understood that I was willing to work with them to get what they wanted off the ground. My limited network motivated me to build a bigger network. That's why I'm here today, through networking. And my flexibility, well, at first I thought, I am not flexible. How many people here in high school? How many people here in college or university? How many people are in the workforce? Those of you in the workforce, how many hours a week do you work? Shut it out. 40. 50? Okay. 65. Anyone? Okay, so on average, people work between 35 and 50 hours in the Canadian workforce. When I was in school running businesses, I was working 100 to 110 hours a week. And I was like, I'm not flexible. I was like, I can definitely be flexible. So these were my advantages. So from there, I started saying, what now? Like, what can I really do? And that's kind of the, what we're looking at here today at TEDx Youth Ottawa. It is, we listen to these great speakers, we see these inspiring presentations. I, I, I look around the audience, everyone has a smile on their face, everyone is empowered. Is, is everyone here empowered? Do you feel good right now? Yeah. Yes. I feel amazing. So, so, so what now? Like, we're sitting here and as soon as I'm done there's going to be one more presentation and then we're going to walk out the doors. Well, when I ever say what now, I, there's always a next step. There's always something that we can be improving on. We can take these ideas from today. We can team up with Mark. We can identify what it is that we want to do in life. And everyone's probably done that right now. I, I bet that as Sean was giving his presentation, just like me, uh, I was like, am I really doing what I want to do? Oh, God. Sean, what have you done to me? <laughs> I need like three cleaning boxes. So, so like, when we walk out the doors, what is it that we're going to do? What now? Some of you in here will be perfectly fine working in office jobs, and that's great. Do it the best that you can. Some of you are going to go on to lead amazing social entrepreneurship uh, endeavors, and, that, and that's great. Do it as best as you can. So the what now question is really, you know, what tools are there available to us? When I first met with, um, you know, Yusuf, David, what we talked about was, 
How can we take the energy of this event, the passion, what we've learned today, how can we take those skills and those tools and make it bigger than TEDx Youth Ottawa? How can we say, we are Ottawa youth, and yes, we have disadvantages, and you know what? They're the same as the same advantages that we have. So how can we take those two things and go somewhere with it? And we can. It just means that those of you who are here today, have to network a little bit, get to know each other, reach out to some of the speakers, reach out to me if you'd like, reach out to your teachers, people in the community. If you want to get something off the ground, you can. It just takes a little bit of hard work. And, and don't say to yourself, I don't have the time. Because you all have the time. You don't have houses to look after. You probably don't have children. <laughs> You're in school, but if you really want something, you know, Yusuf said something to me, he's like, how can we make a bigger event than TEDx Youth Ottawa? How can we scale it on a national scale? He's like, I'm going off to school later, and I don't know if I'm gonna have time. I was like, you'll have time if you want there to be time. So those of you who are here today, who would be willing to make it bigger? Who would be willing to get involved and expand on what we've just done today? Do you know that TEDx Youth Ottawa is the first TEDx Youth event that it has really been helpful? Congratulations for being here. We are the innovators. You are the innovators, you're the entrepreneurs. I speak about entrepreneurialism all the time, and I'm going to wrap this up. I speak about entrepreneurialism all the time. I work with an organization called the Impact Entrepreneurship Group. And what we do at Impact is we unlock entrepreneurial potential in people. I encourage you to check out organizations like this. Shad Valley, yeah. TEDx Program. There are things out there in your community that can help you. <laughs> and entrepreneurialism is not about you know, being a business innovator or a social entrepreneurship innovator. It's about what you want to do with your lives. And really you know, answer those three statements. And again, you, know, you are a youth but you're gonna embrace it, and you're going to succeed. So thank you guys, and please make something of yourselves.